We'll move on to our next agenda item, reports of standing or ongoing uh, Board of Governors committees. Um, so this is an opportunity for uh, the, the chairs or the members of or designated representatives of the different committees uh, to uh, fill us in on what's going on with those committees. Uh, looks like the executive committee is first. So um, we did have a executive committee a couple weeks ago to set the agenda for today's meeting. Um, we did also have a brief discussion at that meeting about um, bringing the uh, various committees board sections to uh, the executive committee for presentations. We started this under uh, President Majumdar's uh, term uh, to invite uh, those folks to give presentations and let us know, the executive uh, committee at least, let us know what um, they are doing, um, how they are doing, and how we can better serve them. Uh, I've wondered, and, and this is something that uh, I may reach out to a number of you about and get your thoughts, uh, about whether it would be preferable to have those folks meet with the Board of Governors rather than the Executive Committee. On one hand, it can be a little bit um, less intimidating to have a presentation amongst a, a group of a smaller number um, versus with the full Board of Governors and uh, the public. Um, but on the other hand, it's an opportunity for uh, those, those um, entities and, and, and sections and committees to be able to broadcast uh, further their efforts and uh, the volunteer uh, time that they spent on um, whatever different interest and in, in section and committee and board that they participate on. So that's one thing that we'll continue to think about whether we make a conversion there and uh, maybe we start seeing uh, more of them in our board meetings. As we saw yesterday, they, we did um, we did have extra time at the end. One of the concerns has always been whether we have time to hear from um, these folks given given our, our busy schedules and the, the other things that we uh, need to tend to. Um, but I'm hopeful maybe, you know, we won't have that problem. We can um, coordinate perhaps better and uh, invite those folks to, to our Board of Governors meeting. It would have been one of the things that, uh, you know, I would have looked forward to as the chair of the Legislative Review Committee back, you know, four or five years ago. And again, as I mentioned yesterday, an opportunity to speak directly with the Board of Governors, which was a little bit restricted in the past. Um, so we'll continue to uh, think about that and then maybe make a change. It would also be better when we're all back in person, I think, rather than uh, on, on these Zoom meetings. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that we will be able to do that in the new year, um, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. All right, with that, um, I'm gonna go down this list. If you have, uh, have things to share, please do. Um, if you don't, um, you can always pass, but, uh, um, if, uh, if there's information that we need, I'd appreciate it hearing it. So next on my list is the Apex Award Committee, and that is Governor Russell Knight. Thank you, President Shaketi. Uh, so update, not for the 2020-2021 bar year, but going back to 19 to 20. Uh, circle the date, December 4th. Uh, I think it's December 4th. Is it December 4th? December 4th, Tara says, 7 p.m. It's a Friday. Um, there will be a virtual APEX awards presentation. Uh, I'm told that uh, President Shaketi and immediate past President Majumdar will be looking spiffer in tuxedos and it will, they will do everything they can to make this as uh, fancy of a virtual presentation as possible. But you don't have to be fancy. You can watch from your couch. So. Tune in and those awards will be passed out uh, at that time. Hopefully in 2021, we'll be back to giving these out in person, but time will tell. So uh, no real update on the, uh, on the awards for this next year, but um, watch the awards presentation this year and then think about who might be deserving of an award uh, coming up in the coming year. Thank you, Governor Knight. Um, I might mention that uh, I 
filmed a portion uh, of that for uh, a, rec a recommended award or an award recipient. Um, and I kind of fumbled my way through that recording. I don't know how that is going to turn out. It just seems like sausage in the making when you're making films of that nature. Um, but they assure me that uh, I am not going to ruin the uh, entire event with my little fumbling. Of it, the looks, it looks great, Kyle. I can assure you. I have seen <laughs> the sausage and it, it'll be wonderful. All right. So they, they do work miracles there at uh, in our editing department. And... Uh, as uh, as Governor uh, Knight mentioned, I, I suppose that the media past president and I will also have to get measured for tuxedos and we will do the best that we can to, to make that a, an interesting event. Um, next on my agenda is personnel committee. Uh, and that's Governor Jean Kang. Um, Governor Kang's not here today. I, we did have a meeting um, a couple days ago, a few days ago, to consider uh, Executive Director Nevitt's contract. We'll be discussing that later on today. Uh, next up is the Legislative Committee, and that's Governor Grabicki. I think that we adequately covered that yesterday, um, so I'll pass. All right. Thank you, Governor Grabicki. Uh, next up is Nominations Review Committee. Again, Governor Kang and President-elect uh, Collison. Uh, we haven't met yet. Our first meeting is uh, November 17th, and the plan right now is to meet regularly the third Tuesday of each month from uh, noon to 1 p.m. So I'll keep you posted on what happens after that. But right, right now, our first meeting is scheduled for next week on the 17th. Thank you, President-elect Tollefson. Uh, Diversity Committee, Governor Sunitha Anjavel, co-chair. Thank you, President Chiquetti. Um, I actually do have a report to give. We've had to sort of hit the ground running this year be, um, because of the exciting news that we are running an election. Um, and pursuant to a change in the BOG bylaws, this will be the first year that the committee um, is able to go through a process where we vet the at-large candidates and then present them to the membership. Um, so we've got, we have gone through that process. We now have four candidates and, um, I just want to announce that on Tuesday, November 17th, there's going to be a candidate forum. Um, I will be the moderator. So, um, it would be great if everybody could check it out. Um, it would give you some good information about who you want to vote for. The elections take place between December 1st and December 15th. Um, so um, I encourage everyone to please uh, come to the candidate forum if you can, if not, um, please vote. Um, and also, um, as Governor Higginson had requested, um, we will be providing updates on, on the goings on of the diversity committee to all the governors throughout this year. And we encourage all of you to come to a meeting um, because the work that we do is also the work that you do. Um, and if anyone has any questions about the new process, uh, feel free to ask me. Thank you, Governor Angevel. Will the uh, panel be entirely uh, virtual this year? It will, yes. Okay. Yes. And it's a, it's the candidate forum is a live webcast, um, streaming webcast. And so it's from 4.30 to 6.00. The diversity committee uh, created a number of questions for the candidates that they will each be answering. They each have to answer four questions um, that we thought were important in relation to the position. Thank you. And so this being virtual, uh, I'd encourage everyone to, to show up and, uh, and watch um, for that hour and a half time period. One thing about the COVID is it makes it a little bit more convenient to uh, to attend these meetings without having to travel. Thank you, Governor uh, Angeville. And also just lastly, there's a link. Um, I got an email from WISBA. I hope everyone else did as well because it contains the link for the candidate forum. Um, but I will try to resend that to all of you uh, freshly so that you'll have it. What was the date again? November 17th, Tuesday at 4.30. Thank you. 
All right, next on the, the agenda is, uh, or next on the uh, list is Long Range Planning Committee, and that's me again. Um, we have not yet met, but I am excited about setting up these, um, these uh, meetings to discuss not only the goals that we set in September, but also the concrete um, steps that we wanna take <clears throat> with specifics and details that will lead us into the next 10 or 20 years. <clears throat> so uh, by next, uh, by January, when we're meeting next, uh, we'll have more information and uh, 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 meeting dates um, by then. Uh, member engagement work group. I don't believe the uh, member engagement work group has met um, and uh, there are written materials uh, on late, late materials five. Uh, Governor Peterson, do you have anything to add on member engagement? Yeah, thank you, President Scrutti. Um We did meet um, one time, but we didn't have a quorum, so we ended up having to leave that meeting. We do have a meeting planned for next week, and I think all of us are excited about kind of just having a kickoff meeting where we're talking about what um, you know each of us really want to focus on or try to concentrate on in this COVID era, right? So member engagement is going to be a it's probably going to look a little different for the next few months, but I think we're all excited about talking about it and figuring out ways to, um, you know, kind of promote the cause and continue to increase member engagement. Thank you, Governor Peterson. And then finally, uh, Gov uh, Budget and Audit Committee um, and um, Treasurer Dan Clark is the chair, of course, of that. There are materials submitted, uh, late materials, page six. So I recommend that uh, the Board of Governors take a look at those. And I don't believe that uh, Treasurer Clark has anything to, in addition to um, talk about. At this particular time, we do have a discussion coming up um, specifically on budget and audit committee items where um, additional items will be discussed. So with that, uh, does anybody have any questions about the reports of standing or ongoing uh, Board of Governors uh, committees. I'll look again to my participants and little blue hands, not seeing any. Uh, I do see a, a chat from um, Governor McBride at Oregon versus Washington State University at 4 p.m. go Cougs. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I'm a Husky, so, you know, the Cougars, um, but I'm also a Husky, so Oregon, it's a draw. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, why don't we take a short break um, now? Um, I, we're well ahead of time. Great. Uh, the next agenda item is presidential appointments, and I'd like to take five minutes to make sure that I have my presidential appointments uh, correct and uh, we'll come back in about five minutes. Uh, Mr. President, before you break? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to note for everyone that the University of Miami is playing Virginia Tech right now. Go Canes. <laughs> Go Canes. <laughs> Kyle, can we just uh, come back at uh, 9.50? 9.50, yes, let's do that. Right. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, that's everyone. That's close enough to Go Cougs. <laughs> Cougs and Kangs, not Huskies or Ducks. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Kangs Easy, Kyle. title Easy. with the Huskies. So again, we kind of have a rivalry there, although that's not a big rivalry, but you know, it always perturbs me that we had to share that national title, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. See everybody at 950. 